Hi designers, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this 3D scene from this. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that it's easier than you think. So I have the 3D and material settings here to the left, which you may want to pause and screenshot. These files will be available on my creative market, which help support me and my creation of content. A few palettes that you will want to have open under window are 3D and materials, and you will be using appearance, we'll be saving graphic styles and swatches. It will help if you create your swatches and then selecting all of them, go to your swatches panel and click the folder icon to create a new color group with the selected artwork. Next, let's get started setting up our graphic style. So with any object selected, go to 3D and Materials, Object, and click Inflate. And then the Native Depth and these settings, I'm going to keep the same. If you are exporting these as 3D objects, then you'll likely want to turn on Inflate both sides. Otherwise, just this top part that we can see is inflated. Under Rotation, I'm just going to change the X axis to 14 degrees. Under Materials, let's use the default and scroll down to Roughness. Change that to zero and metallic to 0.93 or somewhere around there. Under lighting, I'm going to use the standard light and I'm going to select a cooler kind of light to medium value here. So if we do choose a really light color such as white, that's going to make the shadows darker. If we choose a darker shadow, it's going to do the reverse and make the shadows lighter. But it's also going to have whatever hue you decide to use. On intensity, let's go with 200%, rotation 155, height 52. If you think of the sun, if we increase the height, it's going to make the shadows shorter. So like at noon, you really don't see a shadow when the sun's straight overhead. If you lower the height, it's going to give long shadows off the object. Let's increase the softness to 70% and ambient light checked and 200% intensity. You may want to save a graphic style now under graphic styles and click the plus sign. And then now that we add shadows, you might want to save a new graphic style with that. I do want to note that when you save the graphic style, it's going to remember this rendering up here. So if you want it to move more quickly on editing your document, you likely want to save your graphic style without the render turned on. So working on the shadows, let's keep the position behind. And I do want a little bit of floating appearance. So I'm going to change that to 7% distance. And the shadow bounds, let's change that to 200. And what that means is the softness of the shadow coming off. If you have a small shadow bounds percent, it's going to start clipping that. So you're going to see an abrupt clip to the shadow softness. So let's give it plenty of space here. So I'm going to save that as another new graphic style. So now we just have our 3D without shadow and 3D with shadow. And once you apply a graphic style, you can still continue to edit any of these settings. Once we've applied the 3D graphic style under appearance, you're going to see this effect added. And if you want to revert this back to a flat object, you're going to want to delete that effect. And be sure to save often. These files do take time when they're rendering. You want to make sure your work is saved so you don't lose your progress. Let's do a test render by going to this render icon up here at the top right. Turn on ray tracing and quality high. Reduce noise should be checked on and click render. And that looks pretty cool already. So that's the graphic style we've saved with the shadow. If you decide that the shadow is a little too dark, I might want that to be lighter. I'm going to go ahead and make this brighter and darker. So you can see that update live. I may need to resave this graphic style now that I've made that adjustment. I did have render on, so I'm going to turn that back off and now save the graphic style. I may want to delete this previous one because I like the shadow better now. And when you're clicked on the object, you can see that graphic style highlighted. On this leaf, I have a stroke here on the inside and the stroke and the object are grouped. So I'm going to apply this graphic style so you can see and render it. And you'll notice that it's created a scene. So where the stroke and the object meet, there's a definite seam here. Whereas when we get to the donut, I'm going to show you how I might want those to be ungrouped for the placement of the shadows. You can apply the 3D effect to live text, which is really cool because you can edit it later. And I'll also show you how adding a stroke to the text will impact the display. On the sun, I've grouped those items. So let's apply our graphic style on this Lemon slice, all the pieces are grouped. 
And you can select multiple objects to apply the graphic style. I'm going to go ahead and do that to everything. On this Flamingo, I have all of the elements grouped so they will interact with each other on a 3D effect. It's really cool to see all of that detail picked up. On this script text, I typed out the word and then the kerning of the letters, tweaked those so they looked aligned. And then I converted this to outlines. And you can see each of the pieces are separate and I don't want those to show as seams. So under Pathfinder, I clicked Unite. So there's just one shape. And you could add a stroke now if you'd like and then expand the stroke before you make it 3D, or you can add the stroke later. So that's what I did here is I added a nine point stroke and make sure the stroke is either aligned center or to the outside, because you won't see it if it's aligned to the inside. If you change the color of the stroke, depending on the thickness, you're gonna really notice and that's gonna create a seam on the text also. So in the instance of this gold text and the numbers, I did create a thin stroke which helped give more definition to the 3D effect against the background. So let me go ahead and render those. And you can see here's with the brown stroke, just a one point, and here's without. So I really like the contrast that was added. And the same with this medium blue and slightly darker stroke. Next, let's work on this donut. So if I add the 3D effect to all of these groups, I'll show you what that looks like. You'll see that all of these parts are impressed together. And I want these sprinkles to be more floating on top and same with the icing. So now I have just the brown donuts, the icing, and the sprinkles grouped together. I'm going to work from the bottom up since the shadowed area might make it more difficult to click on the object I want to select. And when you save your graphic style, it may apply that fill color. So you might have to use your swatches panel to correct the color or save a new graphic style with that color if you're going to be using it a lot. So if I turn on render, you can see now that each of these layers is floating on top of the other, which looks much better. I do want to make a couple of tweaks though with the shadows. You can see there's quite a bit of offset with that distance. And I'd also like the shadows to be darker. I'm going to reduce the shadow of the frosting as well. So with just the frosting selected, I'm going to increase the height under lighting. And on the sprinkles, I'm going to change the distance from object to zero. And for the lighting color, let's do that closer to white so the shadows are darker. And that's looking quite a bit better. So on the pineapple, you can see in my rendered scene that I've placed a graphic to mimic that texture. And I was playing with and deciding whether I wanted those diamonds to be 3D, or I ended up coming up with this pattern. So back in our working document, with that pattern, what I need to do is go to symbols and I need to add this with the plus sign as a new symbol. And you can name that if you'd like. So I've already applied the graphic style to the pineapple, which is group. And now when I go back into 3D and materials under your graphics, if I scroll down, you can see here's my new pattern that I just added. So just click on the symbol and now let's place the graphic onto the 3D object and I can scale this and rotate it until I'm happy with that appearance. And if you need to go back and edit it, just go back into properties and make sure it's selected and you can adjust these handles. I think it's so cool how on this effect you can see the reflection of other objects. And here's our final scene. This looks really incredible. I love how the highlights and shadows really make it look like the elements are floating. If you do decide to download the file on my website, you'll also get these slice graphics. I hope you found this video fun and I hope it helps you with your next project. If it did, please like the video so others can find it and that lets me know that you enjoyed this type of content. Please subscribe to get notified when I post new videos and thanks for watching. Take care.